Hey, what's up? WizardFu here. Another game development video for you. Still working on the voxel engine. Putting a few proverbial strawberries on top of the pie still. Check it out. Working on light beams right now. Um, I actually had to go with two-dimensional light beams. I wanted to create three-dimensional light beams and effectively did. However, the three-dimensional light beams use so many voxels. It's crazy. Um... So this is the two-dimensional voxel, or two-dimensional, not voxel, but just simply just a two-dimensional sprite used as a light beam. But let's check out why I had to use two-dimensional ones instead of 3D. Let's go open up this, uh, I hope I had a light beam here. Actually, let's uh, get this compiling too so we can see what it looks like with a real three-dimensional light beam. This actually might look really weird. I'm not sure what I ended up doing with the... Uh, the way that the voxels translate to pixels. But anyways, let's look at the point here. The point is that the light beam, here it is. This is light beam I created uh, based on Songbringer's light beams in two dimensions. I put this into three dimensions. And to get it to be, um, to easily get it to work in Magic of Voxel and be able to export this as a model, I simply created a grayscale palette and then dragged in the light beam as if it were rendered with a black background. So then inside the code, it actually loads on all these voxels. And if a voxel uh, has a certain, well, if the model has a certain flag on it, then the model is takes all the value of the, um, the current voxel and then uses that as its opacity. So black would be zero opacity and you wouldn't see it, and then white, would be full opacity and you'd be able to see that voxel as if it were fully opaque. So, but the problem with a three-dimensional light beam or three three-dimensional like additive lighting, you could say with the voxel engine is they're using a ton of ton of voxels. So this is um, 126 by 126 by 126. Check this out. This is kind of surprising how fast this math aggregates. First of all, in the first row, we have 126. Then when we have, if we have a, a two-dimensional row of that, 126 times 126, we're up to 15,000 already. Let's add in another 126, and it immediately jumps to 2 million. It's like so much more, right? So that's, that's 2 million voxels right there that has to be dealt with. So, and especially when you're rotating the camera, let's actually, let's check this out. The frame rate is just gonna drop to nothing. It's gonna be horrible when we rotate the camera. And it might not even look right. I'm not sure how I ended up with these voxels. Okay, yeah, it's, it's not rendering correctly at all. But let's like just rotate the camera. First of all, you can see that we're already um, killing the frame rate. We're at 20 frames a second already. And if, but if we rotate the camera, it's gonna get way worse because it has to re-project 2 million voxels every single time it's changing the camera rotation by even a single degree. So, I just clicked the rotate button and we just, it just tried to recover its frame rate there. Basically it was dropping down to like one frame a second or less. Well, you can kind of see that it actually works when we're rotating the camera, I think because it's cleanly applying all the voxels. Um, it kind of looks neat to have this 3D volume, this sphere, or this, this yeah, this three dimensional volume object up in the air there. But I think the two dimensional ones look just as good and perform incredibly better so this um, and this is even with optimizations so with the three-dimensional method I got it so that it could basically take all those voxels all two million of them and then squash them down into two dimensions so that it basically is using occlusion and addition uh, to smash everything down so it's, it's basically turning the, th the huge three-dimensional two million voxel thing into like only 15,000 voxels but still um, still it kills the frame rate um, of course, where I'm, I'm actually using my re screen recording software, that's killing the frame rate a lot too. You, so usually this runs at 60 here when I've got this two-dimensional light beam. So two-dimensional light beam looks great. Um, you know, it's still using a three-dimensional position. So it, you, so I can like run around the map and that's that's always gonna be centered right there around that fire. See what I'm saying? So that this'll work. I like this and uh, this will give me some of the visual effects that were present in Songbringer with those light beams and stuff like that. It's a little bit bright right now. Of course, I wouldn't have it be that bright. Uh, 
and there needs to be a little bit of slant. That's in Songbringer, that was a cool little trick. Just slanting the light beam a little bit um, at random angles really helps. And then also throwing in some other smaller light beams, like really tiny, horizontally small uh, light beams. And that's really easy to accomplish with two dimensional light beams. Um, so I can kind of go crazy and sprinkle in a bunch of them without having to worry about the frame rate. Um, one thing to note is it's actually using the uh, the last camera. So there's two two FBOs, and the uh, first FBO does the bloom, and then the second FBO is for kind of merging all those voxels at the very end. So you can see that the player has a bloom. The sword uh, brightens up, and it's got this glow around it, but the uh, light beam itself is not actually adding any bloom, uh, even though it's brightening up the pixels a lot right there. That's so that because if we did apply bloom at... Uh, after applying the light beam, that would be just blo blooming everything out right there and it would just look way too bright. So, um, there's one more thing. Oh yeah, I also want to do some particles. That was a really cool part of Songbringer's light beams is that the light beams themselves sort of had these little dust motes sort of highlighted by the light beam. That looked really nice um, and made things feel real nice and alive as well. So, uh, this is ready to check in. I got this all um, going so far, but like I just mentioned, there's some things left to do. So this is a, uh, but one more step towards having the visual quality of Songbringer, but with a three-dimensional voxel engine. So that's it. Thanks for watching.